Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. A big shout out to everyone that has subscribed to our channel so far. Thank you for subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing, and everything that you guys do. We're very, very um, grateful. Um, so today I'm going to be reacting to why is Allah always referred to as he and not she. Uh, sounds like an interesting video. And yeah, excited to see what this video talks about because with each video that you watch, there's always something new to learn. And if you're not learning something, there's always something out there to share with someone out there that may be watching or maybe just people you interact with so without wasting time let's get into the video the greatest verse in the quran is ayatul kursi which is the verse of the throne and it starts like this Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al -hayyul -qayyum. and this ayah like thousands of other examples in the quran contains the pronoun huwa, which refers to Allah, may he be exalted. And generally, when referring to Allah, we also use the masculine pronoun huwa. And when you even consider the translation of this verse and others like it, we see that it is translated into he. So now comes the question, why is Allah exclusively referred to using huwa? the Arabic masculine pronoun, rather than he or she. Does that mean that masculinity is favored over femininity? And before we can answer these questions, it is important to know that Allah is neither male nor female, and there is no one or nothing like him. لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٌ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ So, if he's neither male or female, why is he then specifically used? Why can't we just use she then? Well, first of all, as Muslims, we should know that we are not allowed to give any names or attributes to Allah except for the ones that he had given himself in the Qur'an, or told us about them through his Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. So, when Allah revealed the Qur'an, he chose to refer to himself using the pronoun he. And therefore, we are obliged to use the same pronoun to refer to Allah the same way he did. And we have no room for our own input in that matter. But then the question still remains, is there a reason why Allah chose he rather than other pronouns to refer to himself? And the answer is, yes, there is a reason. And the reason is purely linguistic. So what does that mean then? Well, the Quran was revealed in Arabic and among Arabs. So it was important that the Qur'an agrees with how the Arabs speak, so that they can fully understand it and then be able to spread its message to all nations. So in order to understand why Allah chose He, we need to look at how Arabs actually use the masculine forms and what they use the word huwa for. Arabs use masculine forms in three situations. They use it to express one Whatever is certain to be masculine. 2. A thing whose gender is not yet known. 3. Whatever is not described as masculine or feminine. So let's go through them one by one to understand this even better. So as for number 1, it basically speaks for itself. Anything that is a definite male, we use masculine forms with it. Like a man. And as for number two, we use masculine forms to refer to things that we don't know yet if they are masculine or feminine. So for example, if someone came knocking on your door, you want to ask who's knocking. In Arabic, you would say it like that. 
So the word الطارق in this case is in the masculine form because this word means the man who knocks. And we use it since we don't know yet if the person waiting behind the door is a man or a woman. That's why we did not say man الطارقة which is the female version of the word the woman who is knocking on the door. So, before knowing what is the gender of the person who is knocking, Arabs would use the masculine pronoun to refer to them. And they do that simply because the masculine form of a word is its origin. And to get the feminine version of the word, you will need to add something to the word, a suffix, so that it becomes female. So here we added ta marbuta at the end of the word الطارق. To make it الطارقة. And the same thing applies with so many other examples. That's why it is easier and more logical to use the source of the word, or in that case, the masculine form. And now coming to the third point. Arabs also used masculine forms with what cannot be described as masculine or feminine. And since Allah is neither male or female, then Allah uses the language that Arabs would understand and therefore he refers to himself using the masculine form. And also when Allah refers to or talks about his angels, Allah also uses the masculine forms as well. So it is a misconception that in Arabic the masculine form are only and exclusively referring to males. But in Arabic, masculine forms have far more functions than that. On the contrary, in Arabic, using feminine forms exclusively refers to females and nothing else. So, when referring to a group of people, you can only use the feminine forms if the entire group was 100% made up of females. But if there was even one single man in the group, you would have to use the masculine form, which is used to refer to both male and females. And that's why Allah also uses the same method in the Qur'an, like what we see in Surah Al-Mu'minun. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ The word Al-Mu'minun is in the masculine form. And it would be wrong to think that Allah is only talking to men. In fact, Allah is addressing all believers, male and female. So if you are wondering why Allah does not use the pronoun he or she to describe himself, the answer would be because if Allah did, it would conclusively indicate that Allah, may he be exalted, does have a gender while in fact he does not. That's why Allah rebuked those referring to angels as females. وَجَعَلُوا الْمَلَائِكَةَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ عِبَادُ الرَّحْمَنِ إِنَاثًا أَشَهِدُوا خَلْقَهُمْ سَتُكْتَ so, since angels do not have a definite gender that we know of, we or anyone else are not allowed to specify their gender, which is what the disbelievers did when they called them or referred to them as females. And that's why it is a great sin to do so. So, since Arabic does not have a neutral pronoun, the masculine pronoun will always be used, since it is the default pronoun which does not have to imply masculinity, while female pronouns like he or she in Arabic are used exclusively when the subject is female, and by using it, you will always be specifying the gender of the subject. But hey, wait a minute, English does have the word it, which is the neutral pronoun. And now you might be thinking, well, why don't we just translate huwa, that refers to Allah, into it in English, since huwa here does not refer to a masculine being. 
And the answer is, yes, it is true that English does have a neutral pronoun, which is it. But this neutral gendered pronoun is not to be used for beings possessing the attributes of knowledge, power and will, let alone referring to the king of kings. In English, it would be a sign of disrespect to use the pronoun it in such a context. And that is not the point, of course. Finally, is the pronoun huwa a name of Allah? And the answer is simply no. Huwa refers to Allah, but there is no confirmed hadith or an ayah in which it states that huwa is indeed a name of the Almighty. It is simply a pronoun that Allah uses to refer to himself. Allah also uses in the Quran, Innani ana Allahu la ilaha illa ana fa'budni. Here Allah refers to himself using the pronoun ana, which means I. So here there is no reason for us to think that ana is a name of Allah. So, similarly and for the same reason, huwa is not a name of Allah either, and should not be considered as such. So, in the end, you should know that masculinity or femininity are not among the attributes of Allah, the Almighty, and when using the word huwa to refer to Allah, we should not think it or liken the Almighty to any of His creation. Indeed, Allah is far greater and far higher than any of that. Thanks for watching. I hope you've learned something new today. If you did, please like and share the video for other people to learn from it. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. I love how calmly this was actually explained. Uh, many times, of course, we come across people that are going to question why should something be a he or god be a he or why not be a she um sometimes i feel like we humans actually complicate our own lives because if we go to school today and then we're well, maybe in science class or biology class or whatever class it is we're going to be taught that man man has selfish ways for example and we're going to accept that because we understand that in this situation man actually is talking about both women and men and then when it comes to religious things we always want to debate no this no that i feel like um we should stop troubling ourselves if he is what was used in this situation then let it be it doesn't change um the fact that there's a god that exists it doesn't change that that god that exists is one that created us and that's all that should matter at the end of the day and i honestly enjoyed how this was explained let me know what you guys think about this video if there's something that you guys want me to react to let me know by dropping the link in the comment section below and i'll be more than glad to react to it and i'll see you in my next reaction video